All right, here we go. My name's Jeff K, and you're listening to episode 270 of the world famous West Virginia Surf Report podcast. We're back broadcasting once again from deep, deep, underneath a nondescript home in suburban Pennsylvania. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thanks for listening. Thanks for streaming, downloading, what have you. Whatever method you use, I, I'm i cool with it. Hope you guys are having a good day. Today so far has been pretty good for me. I, sl- I went to bed early last night. It's very, very out of character. I don't do that. You know, and... um. I was, I think I was asleep by 11 o'clock. <sighs> Unheard of. Yesterday, we went, Tony and I went to, uh, all right, you guys ready for this? We went to see the Downton Abbey movie. <sighs> I don't, I don't, I don't need any, I don't need any judgment. All right. But we went to this, uh, Cinemark Theater. I mean, I'd been there, obviously. I mean, it's a movie theater, but it'd been a long time, probably since pre COVID, the last time I went there. And um, we went in there yesterday, and they said, we only have two seats that are together. I'm like, what the? You guys have, like, you know, like designated seating in this thing, you know? Two together is the only, you know, we only have two together. So, I mean, those are obviously the ones we chose. I didn't want to sit separate, you know? And we went in there, and they have these recliners. I mean, the whole thing, the whole theater is full of recliners, Never seen such a thing. I don't go to movies all that often. Everybody, all you guys are probably like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've been doing that for 10 years, pops. But to me, it was new. I was like, holy mackerel, you know? So we went in there and we sat down and um, I I eased my recliner up. I'm like, I'm going to fall asleep. Man, this thing's pretty comfortable, you know? Tony Tony ordered a, uh, she she loves the, the popcorn. Um. I mean, it is, it is good. And we walked in. I said, don't you want to get something to drink? She goes, no, nah, it costs like $17 or something. So you're going to have this big-ass satchel of, of, of super salted just popcorn, nothing to drink? Nah. So uh, I started, you know, we started going going to town on that sack. And um, I don't know. I, I started having like some kind of, I don't know, spasms in my throat. I don't know if it was like... Uh, just because I was thinking about it. Like, you got to have something to wash this stuff down. So I started worrying about it, I think. It's like when you uh, have to get up early in the morning and you can't go to sleep because you're worried you're going to oversleep, you know, that kind of thing. I was like, so anyway, I started, like, coughing and everybody's, like, looking at me. The place was packed, you know. And I feel like I got something fluttering in my throat, you know what I mean? Anyway, so we watched the movie. It was good, you know. It was, uh, you know, it's just a continuation of the story, Enjoyed it, whatever, man. It's yeah, it's a little bit soap opera ish. Not too bad though. It's a good show. I don't, you know, great characters. Ah, we enjoy it. So anyway, we went to that yesterday. Um, it was hot this weekend, hotter than owl piss, as they say back home in oh West Virginia. <laughs> Actually, I've never heard anybody say that before. I think I might have made that up. I'm not sure. I don't remember where I got that, but I've been saying that for a long time. Anyway, uh, very hot, humid. Oh, my God. It went from, I wouldn't say cold, but cool, where it was borderline. Do I need to wear a jacket? You know, it was borderline. Like, when you go to work, like I go to work at 2 o'clock, you don't need a jacket. When you get off at 1130, it's like, damn, it's brisk out here, you know? So we're in that too hotter than, I mean, just incredibly, just demoralizingly hot, you know? Humid, super humid. So then last night, they said there was going to be, I mean, they said tornadoes, maybe, maybe hail, all kinds of just chaos, you know, weather, weather chaos. And then there was going to be cool... I don't. We didn't get the weather chaos, but it is it's right back to cold. Or not cold. I, mean, I don't want to exaggerate, but it's in the 60s. You know, 
Like, what the? How did this go from 95 to 65 overnight? Very strange. Very bizarre. But anyway, I'll take it. I love it. I love this 65, you know. The younger boy said, I'm going to, yesterday, he goes, "Uh, it's supposed to be beautiful tomorrow. I'm off. I'm going to mow. I said, all right. Sounds great. I said, I'm all for it. You know, you got two, two, two greasy thumbs up from me on that deal, you know. So then uh, this morning I, I, I get up and uh, I get up early because I went to bed so early, you know. I went to bed so early and I, I, I slept good and I, I feel refreshed. I get up and the kitchen's a disaster. <sighs> like, is this what? Ooh, I cleaned it up. It was clean when I went to bed. And when I woke up, it looked like somebody threw a hand grenade in there. Why? How? How's it possible? Who was even up? Like, everybody was asleep. Like, how does it get like that when everybody's asleep? Anyway, I'm, like, grumbling under my breath. <laughs> I, guess this, I guess I'm just the butler around here, you know? I guess this is my job, you know? I mean, I, you know, I'm not the only one. There's four of us that live here. I don't know why, why am I in here scrubbing all this shit all the time? You know, I, I, guess, I guess I'm just the uh, manservant in this bitch, you know? That's what I was saying. So then, um, and then the younger, and then the, the older boy went to work. Tony went to work. And uh, the younger boy, who promised to do the lawn yesterday, he goes, yeah, I'm going over to uh, my girlfriend's house. He used her name, but I don't want to say. I don't know why. I don't know why. Why am I keeping this stuff secret? <laughs> what does it matter? But anyway, he goes, I'm going over to her house. I'm like, all right, well, there you go. I mean, I don't know. I don't, it, it, you know, Whatever. If, if I come home tonight from work and the in the yard is mowed, I will be shocked. Shocked, I tell you. But anyway, um, today I thought I would. I have a I have a topic for you guys. I was talking to Steve recently. We were talking about. Uh, do you remember uh, you oldsters? Like if you're old like me and you're a baseball fan like me and Steve and and various others. Remember a uh, Pittsburgh Pirates pitcher, uh, Kip Tocolvi? He was a side armor. He would side arm that shit in there. Submariner. Sometimes they'd be like almost like <laughs> throwing it from uh, from uh, underhanded almost. Real tall, skinny dude with with glasses. Do you remember this guy, Kip Tocolvi? Um, played for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And um, back when he back when we were we were younglings, you know. There was a Triple A baseball team in Charleston called the Charleston Charlies. They were the local team, you know. They were the Triple uh, A affiliate of the Pirates. And there was this uh, in Dunbar, the town we grew up in. There was this store there called Murphy Mart, right? It was like a Kmart type deal. It was a local, I mean, well, not local, but it was a, a regional chain, you know. And the thing about that is, okay, it was actually called Murphy's Mart, Murphy's Mart, right? But nobody said the S. The S was dropped, Murphy Mart. However, right down the row, right down the, you know, at the other end of the of the shopping center was Kroger. That's where the S was added. So they took the S off Murphy Murphy's Mart. You don't say it, but then you add it to Kroger's. You know what I mean? So Murphy Mart, the Murphy's Mart turns into Murphy Mart. Kroger turns into Kroger's. <laughs> so we're just adding S's, dropping S's all willy-nilly. I don't know. I don't make the rules. I'm just I'm not telling you. Anyway, there was a store called Murphy Mart. And it was like a giant, it was like a Kmart. Think, think Kmart, right? Um, and back in the sporting goods department, one day, we, Steve and I were in there. They had uh, two Charleston Charlies players back there signing autographs. They were in full uniform. <laughs> one of them was Kent Tacolvi, and the other one was Craig Reynolds. And I bought a, uh, for whatever reason, I bought a Major League Baseball uh, rule book. It's like a book of, you know, just a book of rules for used in the major. I don't know why. And I had them both sign it, and I still have that. And that was back when you know, Kent to Colby, he's like big, tall, skinny. I mean, he looked like a pipe cleaner. This guy's like, like if you if you know him, you know him. I mean, he's he's very memorable. 
anyway, um, so we were talking about that. Then we started talking about this Murphy Mart place. And that place was, I don't know how we were allowed to, to go in there. I don't know how we did, we were not banned for life from that place when we were kids. I don't know, because of the nonsense that went on in there is shocking when I think back on it, you know. But we went, we ran around in that place. It was like a playground for us. It was like big and expansive. We'd go in there and like just do all kinds of crazy stuff. And I jotted a few of them down, okay. I thought, I, I thought I'd let you guys know some of the things we did in there. I remember playing hide-and-go-seek in there with other kids. And I remember somebody, or maybe it was tag or something. It was something that involved running. Feels like it was hide and go seek. I don't know why, but somebody so somebody goes around a corner, goes sprinting around a corner. A kid, I don't remember who it was, and knocks off this big vase. It was like a vase that they you know was for sale in there. It feels like the vase was like four foot tall. It was like some decorative thing you put in your house. Went around the corner, knocked that thing over, and it just shattered in a million pieces. What just like exploded like a like a fireworks display, you know? You know, and so that thing got. That thing, I remember that thing getting shattered. I remember my friend Danny, this kid Danny that I went to school with all twelve years. He took a uh, he he took a fire extinguisher off off the wall and started messing around with it and. Uh, accidentally, maybe, possibly, I don't know about the accidentally part. He sprayed some lady with <laughs> just some woman is in there shopping. He sprays some woman with a fire extinguisher right in the middle of a store, in the middle of a retail store. The woman was screaming bloody murder. But did we get banned? No. I mean, nobody ever banned us from that place. We're in there all the time. I mean, uh, this is the 70s slash 80s. I mean, you had to make your own fun. You know, we were out and about, you know, making our fun for sure. And um, we were in there all the time. They never banned us. Um, so he, he sprayed that lady with the, he There was also like a rack of clothing it was turned over, completely turned over. Like, a you know, one of those round racks where you got thing gets turned over. Like how how are we allowed <laughs> how are we allowed to continue coming in there? Um, let's see what else. Oh, I mean, I've told you guys this story before, but um, me and my friend Mike were in there one day. I mean, we had our pockets full of firecrackers. I mean, we we're I mean, it's like like Dennis the Menace. You know, Dennis the Menace always had his pockets full of all kinds of stuff. We were like we were in there messing around, doing God knows what. And uh, we went in the men's room, and there was some guy in there taking a dump over in the corner. You know, you could hear him like rattling the newspaper. He's over in the booth, <laughs> over in the stall. And um, so we we go, we go in there. I don't know what we're doing. Who knows? But um, one of us takes firecracker out of our pocket and like lays it on the sink. Uh, you know, so that the uh, the wick or whatever you call it, the fuse is hanging over the side. And we light the thing. Without thinking too much about it, right? We don't think too much about it. We think it's going to be funny because there's some guy in there sitting on sitting on the toilet, sitting on the throne, and we uh, we lay this firecracker on the sink. We light it, light the fuse, and we just start purposely walking towards the exit. We leave the bathroom, and start walking through the uh, garden center, <sighs> heading for the exit. Right, the thing goes off. And it sounds like uh, it is incredibly loud, like shockingly loud, <laughs> like it caught us way off guard. It sounded literally like somebody set off a stick of dynamite in that place. <laughs> I mean, it was so unbelievably loud. This guy's in there taking a, you know, he's sitting on the toilet, looking at the sports section or whatever. Maybe he's checking his stocks. I don't know what he's doing. And this and a, and a stick of dynamite goes off, you know, and um, so you can hear it all over the store. People are gasping. I mean, it feels like people are doing shoulder rolls, maybe like hitting the ground, you know. I mean, like their military training's kicking in or something. So we we go out that side door and just purposely walk. I mean, we we were professionals. We if you run, if you if you take off running, everybody knows who di who did it, you know. 
we were seasoned professionals by this point. We were like, I don't know, 12, 13. So we just like strolling across the parking lot, trying to blend in with all the other people out milling about. And these guys, these two, I don't know if they were security. I don't know what they were. They come out there and I don't know, somehow they were zero. They knew it was us and they started roughing us up a little bit, like shoving us around. You know, they were adults. We were like 12. I don't know. They were like, they, they didn't hit us or anything, but they were shoving us. You know, they had they had their hands on us. They yanked us in there. They dragged us back into the store, you know, like bashing us against the door frame as we enter, you know, that kind of stuff. They take us deep into the bowels of the operation, right? Back in this area I'd never seen before, like offices and stuff. There's ladies in there sitting there typing or something. I don't know. And they're like giving us this look like, look at these two dicks, you know, the disapproving looks from all these ladies in there. And, um, you know, the guys are like shoving us around. They stick us in this office. This guy comes in and starts asking us a bunch of questions. And um, they want to know, first thing they want to know, what our names are. I, I gave my name up immediately. Mike told him, Mike said that his name was uh, Zippo Hartley. That's the name he He said my name is Zippo Hartley, a name I'll never forget. And as we continued, as as the as the uh, the questioning continued, he kept referring to him as Zippo, <laughs> which I was like, oh god, you know. And then they wanted our telephone, our parents' telephone number, our, our house number. Mike wouldn't give it up. I think he gave him a fake number. He he was like, I was like, I, I was like folding, you know. I was uh, folding under the pressure. I gave him my number, but there's nobody home. My parent, my parents worked. I mean, they're they're worked all the time. So uh, somehow, I don't know, I think we called, I think they couldn't reach anybody because Mike gave them, I think they called Mike's number and it was like, uh, you know, who knows, it was like a, a grocery store or something. Um, and uh, they, nobody got, nobody answered at my house. So eventually I think I folded even more and gave them my mom's work number and they talked to her. And um, but she didn't have to come over there. But they so they let as long as one of the parents knew about it. She promised to tell Mike's parents, aka Zippo's. She she promised to tell Zippo's parents. <laughs> and um, you know, so they said, all right, you guys go knock it off. Don't do that ever again. Come in here blowing up things. You know, with your stupid uh, Dennis the Menace pockets. You know, that guy's probably. So anyway. <laughs> Cause I have a heart attack over there. Anyway, so you let us go, right? So then there was a meeting that evening at uh, Mike's parents' house. My dad was working. I don't remember that my dad being there, but I, Mike's parents were there, and my mom was there. My parents and Mike's parents were good friends. They knew each other from like junior high, you know. So they're all everybody knows each other, right? And I'm like, oh God, what's this gonna be, you know? So they call this a meeting down at Mike's house. I'm like, oh, God, this is going to be bad. I mean, you know, you can't be blowing shit up in a, you know, in a discount store, you know. So uh, we get called down there, and we go in, and um, I don't know what to expect. I'm sweating bullets. And everybody just, like, starts making jokes, you know. Mike's dad's like, uh, if that guy's suffering from constipation, I bet that took care of that problem. <laughs> that kind of stuff. And uh, there's, there's like jokes flying around. You know, they they don't even take it seriously. They think it's funny. I'm like, oh my god, thank God. You know, whoo, brother. You know, I mean, I didn't know what was going to happen. They they just said, don't do. I mean, knock it off. All right, don't do stupid shit like that. You know, you're gonna get yourself in trouble. But they didn't take it seriously. We didn't get in trouble or anything. They thought it was funny, you know, setting off a firecracker in the in the men's room of a of a giant store. Sound like sound like somebody like shot a mortar off in there, <laughs> you know. So unbelievably loud. The other crazy thing we used to do in there all the time is we used to go. Say had like a cafe in the back in the back of that place where you could go in there and get. We used to go in there and get chocolate sundays and stuff. And um, you know what we used to do? I was just thinking about this the other day. Well, Steve reminded me of this when we were talking. 
we used to go in there. Where do you come up with this shit? Where? Okay, so it was a it was a sit down place. Had waitresses that come over and help. We used to get these sundays and stuff, ice cream stuff, and um, they had like uh, menus that were laminated. You know, we used to leave a tip. We would take the glass of water. They bring you a glass of water when you sit down, and we put the we put whatever the tip was, like fifty cents or whatever. This is a seventy, so put 50 cents in there, a quarter or whatever, and we put the laminated uh, menu over the top of the, uh, you know, the top of the glass, turn it upside down with the with the change in there, and then pull the menu out. So, <laughs> so the, the tip is underneath a glass full, full of water. We come up with shit like this. I mean, can you imagine what the waitress thought? When she, you know, she, I mean, the money's there, but uh, you're going to have to, you know, you know, you lift that thing up, and the water's going to, you know. So anyway, so anyway, there was this cafe in the back, and we used to go over into the sporting goods section, which was not too far away. It wasn't right next to it, but it was not too far away. And we used to take uh, uh, handballs, you know, that they sell there. Usually handballs, because those things are really good. Those are those are throwable. Occasionally tennis balls, which is a little bit more dangerous, but the handball was perfect. And hurl the things from the sporting goods department into the into the restaurant. You know, we'd throw the balls from sporting goods into the restaurant. And there'd be people sitting in there eating a lunch, having like some kind of a you know, like a tuna melt. And a, and a tennis ball comes sailing in, and you know, land right in the middle of their of their of their meal. Sometimes, sometimes I would do, I would have, I would say, I want to go over there and watch. Like I would, so I would stand over there, pretending I was looking at the yarn or whatever, and and I was just stand there, and uh, and I would watch. There was this guy sitting there eating lunch one time, like an older guy, which I felt like he was old. He was probably thirty five. And this, um, he's sitting there, and uh, a ball, I don't remember if it was tennis or hand, comes sailing in, hits right in the middle of his plate, or whatever, and French fries go flying everywhere. <laughs> it was the greatest moment of my, er, greatest moment of my early life, you know. And um, so we used to do that shit all the time. We did that many times. How did we get? A, how did we not get beat? beaten down. How did we not get banned for life? We used to do that shit all the time. That was not unusual. That's not a one-time thing. We did that many times. Just hurl tennis balls from... We'd open those cans of tennis balls, you know, and they're in that sealed can where you have to take the lid off like you're opening a can of peaches or whatever, you know what I mean? And um, hurl them over there. That's crazy. Um, also, we used to go into the stere- the music department where they had records, they had albums, and you know they had stereo. The, by the way, the the albums, the people that worked there didn't know shit. You know, I went in there. I I went in there one time, and I was looking through their comedy section. They had Elvis Costello in there. Also, there was this band called uh, uh, Lords of the New Church. This band. Featuring Stiv Baders, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I, I went in there, and it was a new release. I thought like, they would have to have it. It's a major label new release, right? Went in there, couldn't find it. And I was like, wait a second. I have a feeling I know where it is. It was called Lords of the New Church. That was the band. So I made a, I hightailed it over to the uh, the gospel section, and there it was. <laughs> you know? I mean, they didn't know anything. But anyway, they had all these uh, they had all this stereo equipment in there, and we used to go in there. And um, there was this one stereo, or there, there was like a whole bunch of stereos, and they had like an eight track tape. This, this is a million years ago, so they had an eight track tape. It was a demonstration tape. It was attached to the attached to the counter with a chain, but it was real long, so you could use it in multiple. So you could test out different uh, stereos, right? And it was like some kind of sound effects thing. And we, <laughs> so we'd go in there and um, put that thing in. There was like a, I don't know, it felt like it was a, maybe like a 15 second delay. So you could put the thing in. So we'd go in there, 
we'd turn the, the volume up as loud as it would go. We'd stick that tape in, and we'd start doing that purposeful walk <laughs> away from the place, right? And the thing would go. It, the thing had, like, dogs barking, you know, like fire trucks, you know, like sirens and bells clanking. And the thing, and the thing would go, Craco. Eight track stereo, wow, 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 <laughs> and it was so, it was so freaking loud. You could hear it all over the store. And every time we did that, I mean, we would just be buckled over in laughter. I mean, the funniest shit I ever heard. I, I, don't, I don't know why it's so funny, but it is. And um, those guys would come go run. <laughs> those workers would go run them back there. They're like really pissed. And, um, you know, whatever. I mean, I don't know how we got away with this, but we, you know, they never, we never, ever got in trouble. We never, the worst I ever got in trouble is with the firecracker. Let's see, what else? Uh, is that everything? I mean, there was other stuff that happened, but that's, that, those are the highlights. You know, that place was great. You know, Murphy Mart. Uh, we had a lot of fun in there. It was, it was our, uh, it was our playground. One of our playgrounds. We had many. We had, I mean, we had, uh. Other places that we caused mayhem. I mean, it was the seventies. I mean, you didn't sit and play video games like killing, uh, killing Russians or whatever you do. I mean, we, we were out pl- raising hell, causing trouble all over town. None of it was like mean spirited, but it was definitely, uh, you know, annoying probably. But anyway, that's uh, that. That those are the highlights. There's other stories I could tell you. I mean, I remember me and Steve being in there. And they had these big uh, balls, these big, I don't know, these big giant balls that you play, you know, play balls or whatever. And um, there was like a hammer laying there, and I was taking the claw of the thing, just, <laughs> just destroying these things, like dragging the claw thing. It was like, they would like, <clears throat> sorry. So it would, it would like screech across the thing, like dragging it, and then finally it would just like explode. <laughs> um, anyway, well, it, we caused all kinds of mayhem, and there was fun. And they never said, and they never said, you kids are not allowed in here ever again. I don't know. I don't understand that. Anyway, so that's the story of uh, Murphy Mart, also AKA Murphy's Mart, right down the street from Kroger's, AKA Kroger. Anyway, um, before I go, I do have one call came in over the hotline from our old friend Eugene, and here it is. Hey, Jeff, it's your pal Eugene from the Wheeler's Dog podcast. Yeah, I'm your old Peaches guy. Why am I telling you? I'm sure you remember. You're not flipped off in the dementia yet. But uh, anyway, uh, episode 268, I was listening to it while I was doing my morning walk. This is Saturday the uh, 14th. Yeah. But just wondering, does anyone in your family listen to the West Virginia Surf Report podcast? I mean, no one in mine does. I suppose the wife gets enough of me, you know, without subjecting herself to more of my nonsense. But uh, just kind of wondering that. Also, have you ever been surprised by someone saying, hey, man, I've, I've been listening to your podcast. Just wonder. I don't need any names or anything like that. It's not like I would know them. But anyway. Also, you were talking about jeans, washing jeans. Uh, somehow, some way, uh, when I was working at, WSJS, we got someone from the Levi Strauss Jeans Company uh, to talk to us about their jeans because <laughs> it was something like National Denim Day or something like that. I don't know. So we got somebody to talk about jeans, and she was saying, don't don't ever wash them. If you do wash them, make it every six months. And ever since then, I've stopped washing my jeans. Uh, occasionally, I do have one one rule. If I get a stain or something, you know, drop some pizza sauce on it, uh, maybe a taco it dumps out in my lap, I give the jeans a wash and uh, put them back in rotation. But, yeah, I don't ever wash up that night, let them air out, and then uh, put them back in the closet. So, yeah, anyway, enjoying the show. Keep up the fine, fine work. What's on? Hi. Thanks, Eugene. Uh, no, nobody in my family listens. Nobody listens to my podcast. Not in the family, anyway. They don't need. They 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 have way too much Jeff as it is. I asked Tony. I said, "How come you don't listen to my podcast?" She goes, "Why in the world? 
I mean, under what circumstance would I want to listen to that? <laughs> I said, gee, thanks. Nobody listens to it. Not in the family, no. But I do have people at work, you know. I have people at work. I try to keep that shit secret. I don't like when my when things overlap, you know, too much. I, I mean, I don't go in there talking about my podcast. I don't tell anybody, you know. But somehow it gets out. I don't know how it happens. And then people start talking about it. So I have people at work. A handful. I mean, it's not like, not out like everybody, but... People at work, and every time they're like, hey, I was listening to your podcast the other day, I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> Causes me physical pain. I don't know. I, I You know, I don't I don't know. I, it makes me nervous. <laughs> but I do have people, you know, out and about in the real world. Not not in this house. No, nobody listens to it. Um, let's see. What else? You, oh, the jeans thing. The Levi Strauss. You had the, you had somebody on from Levi's. I don't know. I, I they say never to wash your jeans. I don't. I you know. I don't. I'm not down with that. I think. I think we were talking about this with uh, with Ian. He 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 thought it was uh, disgusting. I don't know if it's disgusting, but I don't know. I can't. I told you. I told when when Ian called. Uh, the, the jeans as I wear them, especially in the summer. They just get bigger and bigger and bigger, you know? And then you got the MC Hammer pants. You got to cinch your belt. I mean, you, you got to cinch that thing tight, you know? And um, I, 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 it, the, the jeans get bigger and bigger and bigger. Is that a problem just for me? Because I don't hear anybody talk about that. But you need to wash them, get that shit contracted back down to normal size. They just keep getting larger and larger and larger. I mean, I require a large huge sheet of denim, you know, and I don't know anything about this national denim month or was it national denim day? Or was it a month? I don't know anything. I don't know I'm going to check on that. But, um, you know, I, I wash my jeans. I, I talked about this and I, uh, I wash them, but I don't dry them all the way. I let them dry air dry. I, I dry them a little bit and then I let them air dry for the rest Stop them from uh, getting brittle and exploding, you know. But I don't know. I mean, whatever. I mean, I understand people do that. I understand that that's probably the way you're supposed to do it. I don't know. I'm old and set in my ways, Eugene. I don't know. Maybe I'll give it a try. See see how big they can get. Just see how large my jeans can expand, you know. We'll see how that goes. Thanks for calling Eugene. Eugene, by the way, I is uh, my old buddy from Peaches, from back in uh, when I worked at Peaches in Greensboro. Um, ah, it was fun. It was the first. I worked there for four years, and three, the first three, perhaps one of the best jobs, one of the most you know enjoyable jobs I ever had. First three, the last year, not so much. The last year turned into. Retail. I was just working retail, but I had fun the first three years. A lot of the like the main guys left. A lot of the the, the my coworkers had gone by the by uh, the fourth year, and it just begot it just became. I was just like, I don't want to help these assholes coming in here. God, you know, it became retail and it became a grind. But anyway, I loved uh, the first three years. Loved it. One of the best jobs I ever had. And I met Eugene there. He's a good guy, and I've, uh, we've stayed in contact since, along with uh, Bradley, Brad, my friend Brad. He's uh, we stay in contact. Good, good people. Good times. Best time. One of the best times of my life. So anyway, thanks for calling Eugene, and also listen to his podcast. He has a podcast called the Wheeler's Dog Podcast. It's uh, it's excellent. I listened to a, uh, his most recent episode the other day driving to work it was funny i was laughing and um you should got you guys should check it out too i link to it in the show notes every week so wheeler's dog podcast featuring eugene b sims all right check it out all right we're at the end of this thing i hope you enjoyed it i hope uh hope you got some a few laughs out of that and um i appreciate you guys listening if you want to be a part of a show like eugene you can do that we got it all set up for you 570-290-81 what is it? 570-290-8151 is the number. <laughs> For some reason, I couldn't remember. 
But uh, it's a 24-hour-a-day voicemail system. You know, Google Voice is what it's called. So give me a call. Make a comment. Follow up on something I, I talked about on the, in the middle of this insanity. Um, whatever you want to do. 570-290-8151. Also, surfreportpod.com is the website. Check that out. That's uh, that's where expanded show notes, pictures, links, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's a value-added service for listeners of the podcast. And what else? Eh. Oh, I got the No New Jeffs column. If you want to check that out, it's a column I write every month about aging. I'm getting old. I'm getting up there. Setting my ways, like I said. Um, you want to check that out at no new jeffs.substack.com it's a monthly column i post a new one on the first day of every month check it out and that's enough the rest of it's in the show notes you, you, you know the you know the the lineup so thank you guys for listening i will see you soon over on the patreon side oh i forgot to talk about patreon if you want two episodes a week patreon is the place to do it sign up for a four dollar or more monthly donation get an extra episode every week not every once in a while, it's for suckers. So patreon.com slash Jeff K is the place to do it. So check it out. All right, so until next time, which will be over on the Patreon side, you guys have yourselves a fine, fine day. I'll see you. Bye. Draco, eight track stereo, wow, 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 wow. <laughs>